This is lesson 4.4, Intermolecular Forces. It's dedicated to the three main forces, which are London dispersion forces, uh, dipole dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. These are the three intermolecular forces that we'll be looking at. Uh, the London dispersion forces are based on temporary electrostatic attractions. The dipole dipole forces are due to permanent electrostatic attractions and hydrogen bonding is a special case where because hydrogen is bonded to NO or F it's a really strong dipole dipole bond. Here we have a diagram here I'll showing you where the electrons are and at any point in time the electrons could be unevenly placed on one side. If that's the point, if, that's th if that happens and this, this becomes slightly negative that will induce a positive charge here because it will repel electrons from the molecule next to it. So it has this, this positive, temporary positive negative pole. So it's an induced, instantaneous induced temporary dipole. Uh, so it's very weak and we draw a dotted line here to represent that. How do we increase London forces? Well if you have a larger nucleus uh, such as here, there will be uh, a larger atomic radii I should say, there will be more electrons uh, so there's a greater chance of being an unevenness uh, that's why the melting point increases as you go down. Uh, if you have long chains of uh, hydrocarbons uh, they will line up with each other and have interactions with each other um, so that will also increase the London dispersion forces. Uh, if you have uh, less branching of course it allows them to line up more as well. Uh, the next one is the permanent poles. Uh, so if you have a polar bond, uh, there'll permanently be uh, a positive end and a negative end here. Uh, and so that will make the, the attractions far more stable and far stronger. Here we have some examples of dipole-dipole. Uh, we have the chlorine negative, the iodine positive, so we draw the dotted line in here. Uh, here we have another one, another dipole here, uh, attracted to the dipole here. Uh, by the way, make sure you draw in your delta pos uh, and your delta neg and the dashed line when you're representing these poles. Lastly are the strongest ones, the hydrogens. Uh, make sure you know the definition well. It's a hydrogen bound to NOF uh, and then that hydrogen is then attracted to an unshared electron pair. Uh, this happens in water. Let's, uh, and let's go to some other diagrams that are a bit clearer. This one here is how you should draw it. Uh, so draw the dashed lines, show me which one's positive, which one's negative, even do the dipole in there. Uh, so do that there. You can see that's an O, so it has to be N, O or F. So that's ticking one box for hydrogen bonds. The second is it's found some lone pair somewhere and it's attracted to that. So that's ticking the second box. So this one is this special form of dipole-dipole bond that is extremely strong. Uh, this, ta this, this graph here shows you the significance. You can see N, O and F bound to hydrogen. You can see how much higher these molecules are with their melting boiling points compared to similar molecules of similar shapes and structures uh, that don't have this case of extremely strong uh, poles. Just some general uh, property trends too that we've covered quite a few things now. Uh, lowest melting points will be London dispersion forces such as nonpolar molecules. Dipole dipole is, is slightly stronger and it will be slightly it can slightly dissolve in water because of those poles. Hydrogen bondings will be the most miscible because they're very polar, the most uh, soluble in water. Iron uh, is, is very strong, uh, so if it can break up then it will dissolve quite easily. Uh, metallic bonding won't allow uh, solubility because uh, they won't mix up with the water uh, into those bonds because they already have st very very strong bonds just like uh, covalent so these lattices are too strong generally to break. Uh, now we need to go into some more detail uh, so we're going to look at some uh, specific melting boiling points of specific compounds uh, so we need to look at their structure uh, most of the time we're looking at uh, simple covalent molecules because if they're a covalent macromolecule uh, if or if they're metals or ionic compounds uh, they'll generally have very high melting boiling points. Um, so when we can look at the smaller molecules uh, we can look at 
the intermolecular forces will have a, a much greater uh, influence on their melting and boiling points. So let's have a look at these compounds here and compare their melting and boiling points. So first we're containing, uh, comparing methoxy uh, methane with alcohol. They both have uh, two carbons, uh, so they're very similar molecular weights, so that's not going to influence. Uh, so we can look purely at their intermolecular forces. So drawing the Lewis structure here, uh, we can see that for the first compound there is dipole-dipole bonding. Uh, so that will have uh, be different to this one because in alcohol there's an NOF, so there's a very strong hydrogen bonding going on there. So we can confidently predict that the melting point and boiling point of the alcohol, because it's hydrogen bonding, will be much higher than the methoxy methane. Next two compounds are water and sulfur. Again, very similar looking compounds. The difference is the first one has hydrogen bonding uh, and the second one only has dipole-dipole. Don't forget that every compound we're going to look at every has London dispersion forces, so you must include that as part of your analysis. Here we have hydrogen, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride. Uh, so if we look at these two compounds here, the difference here, the fluorine has hydrogen bonding, the chlorine doesn't. Uh, so that's the, the distinguishing feature that makes hydrogen fluoride the stronger, the higher melting boiling point. Here we have three compounds. Uh, so we have a very nonpolar uh, compound, so that's just London dispersion forces. We have a dipole-dipole plus London dispersion. We have hydrogen bonding plus London dispersion. Uh, which would also have dipoles in it as well. Um, so that's going in order of increasing melting boiling point.